punch, right? And they give you a rum punch and then you get onto uh, some little uh, kind of golf carts and they take you up to the to the house. And then you, I was walking around the house. I actually did a video from a blogger on this, but uh, walk around this amazing house, pool table, kind of. Uh, and then and then the weirdest thing happened. Happened there was like a, a life size chess kind of board on the floor on, on the on the in the great house. Um, and then there was like this random turtle like, walking around. The in 2009, I believe it was, um, when Kate Winslet was, was with Richard, the house actually burnt down. So it's actually had a massive rebuild. And the interesting thing about what Richard was saying was, is that it actually allowed him to, to create, a, a, an even better version of, of the house. The unfortunate thing was, is that Richard actually lost a lot of kind of very personal possessions, letters from Princess Diana and all of this kind of other stuff there. Um, and, uh, and the first <laughs> interaction with Richard was we were, we went down to start this um, race around Necker Island that Adrian was just talking about and then suddenly Richard was there actually driving the carts down and then he was just kind of chilling out and he suddenly just realised at that point that, that how privileged I was to be part of this group very small, intimate, just around 30 of us um, and then you know, kind of Richard just came over, shook my hand, told him who I was and he was just kind of like hanging out at the bar and chilling out yeah, <clears throat> you know, but before we go, we'll, we'll post pictures over on the website. So if you're not, um, if you're listening to this on iTunes and you're not uh, subscribed to the newsletter, head over, head over to thefootpreneurs.com, um, and subscribe and we'll make sure we'll add some pictures and then the video that was, um, created of the trip. So you can check that out. Uh, we're going to be sharing with you, um, today, you know, five of Richard's golden rules for business. Um, but we just thought we'd start with kind of our personal experience there. And so like Simon said, um, we were at the bar hanging out with Richard. Richard. And actually, our friend Anil Gupta was there, and uh, he knows Richard pretty well. He's done some st- uh, stuff with his Virgin United and different uh, charity stuff. He's, he's worked with Richard before, and so uh, they, we, we were at the bar, and Richard was ordering a drink, and uh, noticed he had the, an energy drink there, and the energy drink that was was called Pussy. And it was an interesting name, but very fitting, obviously, for, for Virgin Island, uh, for Richard Branson, owner of Virgin. Um, so I said to Richard, I, I said, uh, you know, interesting drink you have there. I guess very fitting. And he turned around and he said it was his son's drink. And I goes, oh, well, shouldn't it be called Virgin Pussy then? And Richard just looked at me and goes, nobody likes virgin pussy uh-huh. and it just everyone was laughing and, and uh, uh, that that was the first conversation i've ever had with uh-huh. richard you know um and right away cracking jokes and i just knew from that point on it's going to be a magical day um, i didn't expect him to take part in the adventure race and so one of the things they had arranged for is the staff it's the first time they've ever done this they were so excited but they'd set up an obstacle course around the whole island and so we actually ended up running around the whole island. And, um, it was, it was a bit of an adventure, to be honest. I'm not really, um, in a island running shape. <laughs> But um, we were running around, and you know the banter with the teams. Richard was on green team. I was on uh, blue team. We ended up winning the whole thing. And um, so my team was out in front, but I I was behind because um, my team was a bunch of really athletic people that took off sprinting, and I was kind of the the slow poke. But I still was with the, I was keeping up with the green team, the red team, the black team, um, who were you know second, third, and um, so so the green team ended up in third. That's about when I finished. And once we ended up, we were everyone ended up in the hot tub. Richard had a, has a huge hot tub. Um, and uh, he's got some chemical in there that stops the skin wrinkling. So you can spend hours in there. It's, it's awesome. But I ended up next to Richard. I asked him about the, the birthday video he made me, if you remember that, and he did. And we had we had some jokes about that. Um, Simon got a picture of that. Um, but unfortunately, Simon's phone went missing later that evening. <laughs> and uh, so, so hope, hoping we recover that. But, you know, it was just the whole experience in seeing that. Um, you start to put things together in terms of the way Richard is as a person, as a business owner, as a, as a, um, as a boss, so to speak, to his employees, the fun that goes on, the, 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 you know, kind of events that are created, the culture, you know, all of these things that Virgin across their 300 cent companies, you know, if you've ever flown Virgin, you know, it's a unique experience. If you ever stayed in a Virgin hotel, you know, it's a unique experience, worked out in a Virgin active or, or, you know, um, have any of the other Virgin services, you know, it's very different than most. And so just getting to see that you start to put the, I guess, put the dots together and, you know, connect the dots in terms of why the company is so successful because of, you know, the leader. 
Yeah, and uh, my own personal experience is when uh, I was overtaking AJ on the island run, <laughs> was I managed to, uh, Richard was running on his own, and I managed to run alongside Richard for a good um, five minutes, and I was just chatting to him about about what I did, coaching uh, fit pros in their businesses, and um, I was just asking about what he does uh, fitness-wise. I was essentially in a fitness session with Richard Branson, so I thought that was pretty cool, and he was saying to keep fit. He now, um, he used to do a lot of swimming around the island, but he now um, does a lot of tennis, and and uh, kite surfing, he really, really loves kite surfing. And I know he challenges lots of different people. You know, some amazing people have been to Necker Island. He has actually something called, uh, what's it called? The Elders, where he brings together some of the, like, the biggest kind of, uh, it's, it's like leaders and, and ex-presidents, um, uh, those that can really make a difference to, to the world when, when something terrible happens in a country and there's lots of leaders, um, that everyone kind of puts their heads together, which is really, really interesting. So I managed to have that really uh, awesome time. And then into the evening uh yeah i did lose my phone but managed to get some awesome pictures of, of me and richard which i'm going to tre- cherish um and uh, now actually just reading his uh, new book on leadership which he put together it all has a different meaning when i'm reading that as, as now i've managed to uh to uh meet the great man himself um you know we're going to go into uh into this uh podcast today just giving you some kind of rules uh that richard kind of lives by based on just our conversations and also conversations that our friends have had and, and information that's out there about richard and maybe uh you and your business at the moment maybe uh you want to install some of this culture um into into your business uh, aj yeah so um We'll jump right into these rules, and then we, we'll probably share stories as we go. Uh, it's funny what Simon was saying about fitness and how he doesn't swim so much now. I asked him about if he'd ever run around the island, and he said he'd never never ran. So he that was the first time with us he, he ran around the island. Yeah, I asked him. I asked. I asked him um, how. Uh, how many miles around it was or how big it was and he didn't actually know yeah. it was surprising also apparently he has uh, two pet sharks yeah um apparently he was uh he for, for a long time he's had these sharks that come up and just like randomly eat his stuff it's like some crazy stories yeah so um quite quite an experience as you can tell um and hopefully you you know just listening it kind of inspires you as well um to kind of step up and and kind of maybe you have someone that you look up to as much as as me and rich uh, me and simon look up to richard um and maybe you know you can you can look at man how can i get around that person because um you know you read the you read the books and you you watch you know them building businesses but until you're around them it really doesn't all seem to to really click you it re, i really got it when i was there i really understood why richard is the what is richard you know why he's been able to do what he's been able to do just from his energy his spirit his his uh you know constant uh, enjoyment of life so we'll jump into these into these five rules and kind of like simon said maybe uh, can help you uh shape your business a little bit but more so than anything just so you can kind of see how someone at that level thinks you know and i think it's important to study the greats the people who have built amazing uh, legacy businesses who have built things that will you know live longer than they do you know will will be remember they'll be remembered forever because they really have put a dent on the universe um and so you know but sharing these rules hopefully you start to think about, you know, what, what, what role do you want to play in, in this life? And, and, you know, how big do you want to play? And, and what do you want to create? And maybe this will, will guide you towards that. So rule number one, basically, if you don't enjoy it, don't do it. And you must love what you do. Yeah, you know, this is something which I've installed in my business and um, you've just got to wake up every day and really want to kind of not be looking at the clock. You know, how can you build the things that you love personally into your own business? You know, Richard is just a, a fantastic, fun person and, you know, he doesn't like to have meetings with ties. In fact, one of the interesting things he said is, is that whenever he has a meeting, he normally goes and walks and actually just goes into a fun environment. He has business meetings in his bath. You know, he talks about... um conversations with nelson mandela where he's done it in the bath and crazy things so just enjoying every day we can oftentimes have our business be a stress to us but if you love to do video for example or you know think about like in the last episode or sorry the previous one of the previous episodes where we talked about your zone of genius you know go back and listen to that episode because if you can tap into something that's fun for you maybe if you like to play guitar or you like to you know be on um i don't know sing or something crazy like don't think that people won't love to see that person 
personal side of you within your business. And so your quirky side, the side that people find fun, you know, when, when you're in a party and friends are laughing and, and seeing you, your crazy side, you know, that's what people are going to connect with. And that's, uh, I think the reason why people, um, you know, like Richard so much is that he's such a likable person. He's such a, a warm and, uh, and, and actually he talks about this, which is a lot of that has come from how he's, he was brought up. And, um, you know, he was saying that, um, you know, if he ever spoke badly of someone when he was young, that, that his parents would stand him in front of a mirror for five minutes so he could actually realize what he was actually saying, um, to, uh, about other people, which I found interesting. So yeah, just, uh, really, I love your business. You know, they're, 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 they're there became a time where I stopped being a, a trainer and I wanted to go into the business side. And that was because I was, I was not enjoying it anymore as much as I could. And I knew that, um, like the bigger asset was going to be me helping fitness professionals. So if you're getting to that point in the business where you're it's starting to get a bit stressful or you're starting to not as enjoy it much, then it no, it's normally a signal that either you need to take a break or that something needs to change. Um, and just use that as a signal to, uh, to, to, to spark some fire. Maybe you need to bring your partner into the business. Uh, you know, showing a bit of uh, love and care for, for for how you believe that people should have awesome relationships, or maybe you need to go and um, just just do something whereby you're just adding that fun element. You know, when Richard did his uh, Virgin Weddings brand, you know, he dressed up as a in a wedding dress in order to market it. Um, maybe the things that you do on a Friday night that you don't tell anyone, you should start bringing into the business. Yeah, you know, um, a lot of people. Uh, especially trainers are working so hard to spend more time with their family, right? They're, they're working as hard as they can so they can create freedom. And one of the things, um, w- there was an interview session with Richard and uh, Yannick sat down and asked him a series of questions. And one of the things, you know, he asked him about was, you know, being a family man and how much does family mean? And, you know, f- from the very beginning, Richard has always worked from home. And he's built 300 companies working from, from home. And he said when he was, when he lived in England still before he bought Necker Island, he lived, he had a, a barge boat and he'd have business meetings on the boat and he'd be changing, you know, diapers in front of the, the clients. Just right from the beginning, he, he created his whole business around his core values and what he loved to do. And one of those things is to be around family. And so, you know, as a trainer, there's multiple roles you can take as a trainer and you can, you can obviously be a, you can be a trainer who's in the trenches training people. And if you love doing that, you can set your life up so that, you know, um, instead of doing one-to-one sessions, so you have to, you know, in a, in a day you see 10 clients, you could do a boot camp, and in one hour you could see, you know, 20, 30, 40, 50, a hundred people, depending on your location size. And so you can change more lives without doing more hours and you just need to find out, okay, I love this. And so I need to bring in the people who will surround myself with the people who will build the business. Some people love the marketing side. You know, like myself, that's kind of how I switched from being just a trainer. You know, I was running, I was uh, running the personal training department in a large health club. And, uh, I realized that I, I was more interested in, in the marketing and the sales side of things. And that's what I got excited about the most was, was that. And so I started studying that and, and, before long I was running the health club and then shifted. Um, and, and so some of you, you know, are interested in that. And so, you know, you need to find, okay, I love that. So I need to hire trainers to work for me. Um, and then some people love new business, you know, creating new businesses. And that's, that's really a true entrepreneur. And so you'll have the gym, but you, you have your eyes set on, on maybe launching another product. Maybe it's an online product. Maybe it's a supplement line. Maybe it's a clothing line, all these different things. And so, you know, you just got to figure out what it is you love and then start to reduce all the other stuff. Obviously, at first, sometimes when you're starting out, you have to do some of the stuff you don't like just to get the ball rolling. But if you know what it is you love and you know what it is you don't love, you know, you can slowly one by one take those off the list. And the quicker you can do it, the better your business will be. Yeah. Number two, be innovative and create something different that will stand out. You know, this could be a different product. It could be a different service. It could be the way that you market yourself. You know, we were talking earlier about um, all of Richard's different um, crazy marketing and, and PR stunts. In fact, if you type into Google uh, Richard Branson PR stunts, it'll come up with a list of uh, different uh, ways that Richard has marketed his his businesses. I think for one of his companies, he, he drove a tank down the New York uh, for another. He, um, you know, he's done crazy things with hot air balloons you don't need to you don't need to have a massive budget now that's the thing about richard he, he likes to save money by um by by doing things that get into the pr uh into the prs uh, the media's attention 
Yeah, one of the things he did when he launched uh, the airline company was he didn't purchase a, a, an air, uh, you know, an aircraft. He rented an aircraft um, for for a year, um, and so he had an agreement. You know, he could he would rent it for a year. He would try his airline thing, and then if it would take off, he would sign an agreement with that company to continue to use their fleet. And um, what he did was once once the concept was proven, and he knew it was going to launch Virgin. He, uh, Atlantic, um, he basically found a company that would put their, um, TV sets, you know, in the headsets into the, into the airline. And, uh, they actually paid, um, you paid him to do that and that covered the cost of the airline. So he's done a lot of things like that where, um, you know, money is, he's, he's been innovative. He's, he's gone, he's done something different than everyone else. And it's really, really made him stand out in, in the business world. And then of course, all his PR stunts always make him stand out too. Um, his son actually, Richard showed us a little mini documentary. His son is making on his hot, hot air balloon kind of disasters, so to speak, because, um, they didn't turn out so well. So um, definitely, you know, the key is to take, I think, is to step outside the comfort zone, right? Um, you can be innovative in terms of your transformation contests, right? Instead of running, uh, and this is what we'll talk about, we're never selling sessions or we're never selling training, we're selling transformations. And you can create whatever transformation you want. You can call it the different names. You can have fun little things. Um, you can be innovative in your marketing for the time of the year, um, you know, Christmas, uh, Valentine's Day, Easter, 4th of July. July, you have all these things, you, you know, we've talked about this before on shows where you can dress up, you can do promotions, you can have, you know, uh, workouts where everyone's dressed in costume, you know, Halloween, a lot of people do that. Um, so there's lots of stuff you can do to really kind of stand out from your, from your, from your local gyms. Um, really no one else, you're not going to walk into a big box gym, you know, with 6,000 members and see anyone dressed up working out on Halloween. But if you've created an environment like that in a community, um, you, you know, again, you're going to create this culture and this loyalty where people just love to be around you. And that's definitely something with Richard. You can tell his employees and, and everyone around him just, they absolutely love being around him. I mean, he was up on the table dancing at the, after dinner, he had all the girls, you know, Richard likes girls. Um, he loves being surrounded by beautiful women. And so, uh, at the end of dinner, you know, it, he was announcing the winners of the, the adventure race. And, um, he, he got the girls up from the team, not the guys, just the girls up from the team. And then he had everyone dancing around, around the table. And so he was on the table with about 30 beautiful uh, women, his employees, the uh, majority of whom are women, um, and then the girls that were there. And yeah, it was just, it was, it was a, a good fun, but you could tell everyone just was just having a blast, you know, and that's what creating the right culture is about. And so you, you can do that in your gym as well. Um, and, and people will be loyal and they'll want to be around you and they'll just absolutely love coming in and working out every day. Yeah. And, uh, in fact, uh, we were, when we were, this reminds me when we were doing the, uh, the island race, one of the tasks was, was to use a member of staff in a very, uh, well, to, for a, for a selfie. And Richard grabbed the member of staff and put them in a very, uh, awkward position and then took a selfie and just giggled and ran off. Uh, <laughs> it's crazy. Uh, some behind the scenes stuff there from NECA, which is, uh, pretty, pretty funny. Twerking on the video. Really. Yeah, doing twerking, all, all kinds of crazy stuff going on there. Um, number three. Your employees, uh, if you have them, or your team, um, are your best asset. Um, happy employees make for happy customers. Yeah, you know, one of the things you could tell the people who were working there was that they just, that they didn't want to be anywhere else. Um, they were just so happy to serve um, us, and, you know, they would make sure that our um, time on the island was was um, the most pleasurable, pleasurable it could be. I uh, wanted to make sure we had everything we needed. I went out of their way to get things for us and, and, and really, you know, just love their job. And then when Richard came around, you could see why. And that was because they just love Richard. And, you know, if I think a lot of trainers forget, you know, and I've seen this a lot in some of the, the gyms now where people are transitioning away from coaching, they're handing it over to a head coach. What ends up happening is they, they stop coming around and the head coach kind of takes on all responsibility and the, then the head coach isn't happy with that, you know, because, um, they never intended to be the owner of the gym. They just wanted to, to, to train and coach. And so one of the things, you know, you got to be careful of is that, you know, regardless 
regardless of who's running the classes or or doing the coaching, like you're still the owner of the company and you're, you're still responsible for that, for those team members, making those team members happy, making sure they have everything they want. You know, one of the biggest things, um, that, that uh, Richard has talked about before and, and it's, it's been talked and discussed in lots of other places is that money doesn't make for happy employees. Right now we have this thing over here where like, you know, people are demanding higher minimum wage. And the problem for that is, is that more money won't make these people happy because they'll just find more ways to spend it. Happiness isn't created by the dollars that someone gets paid. And so, you know, obviously working on Necker Island is an experience in itself. And, you know, they get to go and, uh, you know, swim with large giant tur- sea turtles and have all these crazy parties and all this different stuff. So that's obviously a thing. But, you know, outside of that, like it, taking people on, ex- like on, you know, team retreats and things like that, most companies don't do that kind of stuff. You create experiences for your team as much as you try to do for your clients, um, you're going to see that your team's loyal to you and they're not going to go anywhere. You know, the, the, that's what makes the difference in business. And, um, people always think if I just pay them a little bit more, they'll be happy, you know, and, 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 and it's more like Simon just said, if you didn't hear it was, it's more recognition and, and significance, you know, those are the two things they want. And so doing stuff, taking them, creating experiences, you know, that, that makes them very happy, you know, giving them more time with their family will make them very happy, you know, the things that you want probably are the same things they want. Maybe not at the degree you want it, but in terms of like balance, you know, to be able to spend t- more time with the family and stuff like that. So if you hire a trainer and you think it's awesome because they work, you know, 60 hours a week, um, you got to understand that they're probably, you know, not happy at home. So you got to kind of think of those things. And Richard has, um, an unlimited vacation policy with his, with, with Virgin, like across the companies. If people need to take a vacation, they can take as many vacations for as many days a year as they want and still get paid the same, you know, and they don't abuse it because they love to work. So, um, it's something that, you know, maybe to think about for your business. Yeah. And in, in Richard's own words, uh, some of the keys that he says in, in, uh, you know, working and, and building a team, you know, it, the business is, is in direct relation to how good you are with people, you know, uh, that you genuinely care, that you draw out the best of people, that you're inspiring and also that you're not criticizing. Um, you know, he tells a story in, in, uh, that she spoke about, which was how, um, back in, I think it was the early nineties or late eighties, um, one of his staff for Virgin records was was found to be um selling uh, i think it was kind of uh, kind of knock off cds or something and selling them back to the company some some story like that anyway um and he was called into richard's office and, and richard gave him gave him a second chance because uh, the guy was genuinely sorry and, uh, and that that employee ended up signing up the likes of uh, i think it was the well, is it Rolling Stones or yeah, Rolling Stones and uh, and some other big bands? And so uh, Richard's a firm believer in uh, giving people a second chance and and really drawing the best out in people. So uh, really finding out when you're when you're bringing on staff is in terms of what makes them happy and not what you think makes them happy. It's like the five love languages if you if you've looked at it in relationships, knowing what actually drives someone as opposed to what we think someone wants. And um, once you find out actually what what drives people and gets them excited, it's not often the same thing that we want. Awesome. Number four, uh, lead by listening. Uh, get feedback from your staff and your customers on a regular basis. And, I, and this one is is kind of a give me. Like a lot of people build their companies, um, and a lot of times think they know best. And the the thing that you have to understand is that. A lot of times, especially if you're removed from the day-to-day um, happenings, which, you know, as you grow as a business owner, there's a good chance you'll move away from doing the things like the training, doing the things like the sales, the marketing, because you'll, you'll, your focus and your vision will be on growing the business, whether that's opening another location, whether that's expanding your services online, creating online products, DVDs, videos, programs, you know, supplements, clothing, uh, you know, partnering with people, whatever it is, you'll, you'll be in the business less and less. And the key to, to creating a great business then is by listening to the people that are actually in the business is by servicing the, uh, surveying the customers, um, <laughs> surveying the customers and finding out, um, you know, what they love, what they don't like, you know, and you know, what, do, what could you do to improve? And if you can stay on top of that, then you're going to have a great business. Most people f- where they fail is when they begin, they have amazing customer service. They have amazing relationships with their employees because they're in close proximity. And 
what happens is as they grow, that proximity becomes, uh, you know, removed by more and more people in the company. And so, you know, if, if there's a, a head trainer and you've got five trainers underneath that head trainer, there's a good chance you personally as an owner don't talk to those five trainers. But the problem with that is, is maybe they have feedback on how you could be more efficient, how you could be more automated, how you could make more sales because they're in the trenches. And so it's really key that, that you're always paying attention to what your employees say and then, of course, what the customers say. Um, because not that the customers are always right, but you, you got to remember that they're the ones we're serving. They're the ones whose lives we're, we're trying to change and transform. And so we, we don't want to let growth affect the experience and results that we're, we're, we were dedicated to at the very beginning. Yeah. Number five, finally, be visible. You know, you want to market um, the company and its offers by putting yourself um, or a, a member of your staff in the, uh, in front of the cameras. And, um, you know, I've done this in my business and I get my clients to do this, which is really avoiding, like I said at the start of the episode is, is hiding behind your brand and logo and actually pulling yourself to the forefront. You know, people buy from people. Um, and, you know, especially this, this kind of, um, day and age with social media, you've got, you know, Twitter, Facebook, you've got the things like Periscope now, which is kind of live video. You know, you really want to be separate in your, yourself from the competition, not just on a monthly basis, but on a, on a weekly and daily basis now, I think. I think the more times that you put yourself out there and the more consistency that you have, um, the more you're going to get edged in, in people's brains. And, you know, the reason why Richard does what he does is that, you know, he's just drawing out his own personality. He, he's, he's got a certain likability and he wanted and he recognized that and he wanted to showcase that to other people. And that allows him to get that. You know, if you're a really likable person, for example, but people don't see that in the business, then that means that a likable person isn't being marketed out there, and that means that someone else's likability is is uh, is being uh, put out there. And so, it's very very important that what you believe, um, you know, uh, if you if you love yourself enough, and you and you believe that you've got, um, you know, and you attract people to you, you know, outside of the business, and of course that's going to attract people to you in the business. You know, here at the mastermind, who we was chatting to a, to one of my clients, and he has a real passion for golf. And you know, where you may not think that people would want to know that, you know, golfers resonate with golfers. You know, they they they're one and the same. And so once once people can find common ground, and oftentimes the problem is is that people think that the thing that I like, other people won't like. Well, actually, it's just a flip opposite of that. Yeah, it's interesting you say that because um, I was just at Bedros Kulian's uh, event and uh, it was at the uh, the VIP dinner. He, he invited me up there and I was sitting with a couple of fit, uh, fit professionals who um, have, have worked with me before and know me. And uh, we were talking about um, speaking at Change the Game, uh, an event that's coming up here at the end of April. Um, and, you know, I was talking about what? I want what I would want to talk about if I was to talk about what I wanted to talk about. And I was talking about like disruptive technology and, um, you know, you know, new age medicine and, and the way things are going and, and how I see this integrated health and fitness, you know, in the future of where, you know, a fitness professional basically is, you know, someone comes in. And you look at them and, 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 you know, you, instead of asking them how much weight they want to lose, you kind of do a body scan and it says to you how much weight they have to lose. Um, and then, you know, we basically take a, a, a prick of the finger. We take a dr- sample of blood. It shows us what's going on on the hormone levels. Uh, then we give them wearables to take home, like, you know, Fitbits, are like a great example, but we give them wearables so we can track their activity the other 23 hours of the day. They're not with us. And so I, I was telling them that's what I'd love to speak about, but I said, no one wants to hear about that. They want to hear, you know, they want to hear about sales or marketing and then it's just a, and they looked at me and they're like AJ we, we definitely want to hear about that stuff um, but the, and the reason I, I, I say that is because you don't hear other people talking about it that much because you know often they're, they're so focused on their business that this, these aren't the discussions that came up same with the youth obesity stuff you know my passion um, has always been with, with youth athletics that's why I helped build the International Youth Conditioning Association um, and uh, you know it's why when I was running a personal training I had you know youth fitness classes that I ran I've always loved youth and I've and 
I've always had this, you know, idea to kind of eradicate and get rid of childhood obesity. Um, and I've always watched people like Jamie Oliver who are, who are going after that kind of stuff and been like, yeah, man, I, I would love to get involved. And, but I've never really thought anyone else was like as interested, like out of my friends and stuff like that. And I just mentioned it on a podcast interview I did with Jason Ferugia. And I had like 10 people reach out to me being like, oh man, let me know what you're doing, how I can get involved and stuff like that. So, uh, I've, I'm even learning that at this level, you know, that, uh, oftentimes like what you think people, uh, want from you or seeking from you, um, is oftentimes not what, what it, what they really want you to be talking about or, um, you know, if you open up a new avenue, they're more than willing to go on that journey with you. And I think that that's one of the things Richard had did very well with his brand, with Virgin. You know, he started off with, with the magazine and then a Virgin Records, I think, was his first company, right? So Virgin Records was his first company, but he bu- built s- such a loyal following. Um, student. It was a student magazine, and then, and then Virgin Records was the first Virgin company. Um, and what's interesting is, is that he built, from that point, he started building a loyal tribe. And, you know, as these expand, it's almost like Apple, you know, Apple with their products, like they have the Apple, um, you know, uh, fanatics that will line up before to, to get the products and pre-order and do, and, you know, they go to all the conferences and stuff like that. Virgin has the same thing. And so, you know, a lot of times, um, you know, if you fly on Virgin, you know, over here in the States, it's not as easy to do, but, um, you know, I always like to fly, you know, overseas on Virgin. Um, I've looked at personally, you know, switching my phone over to Virgin, um, and different stuff like that in England, you know, Virgin has, you know, uh, phone service, TV service, all this different stuff. What you find is like most people are, are loyal to that brand. Um, but it's because of Richard, he's the face of the company. They love Richard. And so they want to be a part of it. And, um, What's, what's unique about Richard, um, is that he was early, that he was the face of a company before being the face of a company became popular. Now with social media and stuff like that, you know, guys like Gary Vaynerchuk have pushed this, um, you know, uh, with, uh, Thank You Economy, Crush It, uh, his latest book, Jab, 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 Right Hook, um, about, you know, companies can't hide behind brand names anymore. They have to have a face. They have to have someone to stand out. But Richard was doing this before, CEOs would do like no one was doing this when he was doing it. And so, uh, he really set the wave. And when, when he was talking about his hot air balloon stuff, it started making me think about, you know, like Jack LaLanne and Jack LaLanne used to do crazy things. Arnold Schwarzenegger, crazy things. And I was starting to think, what crazy things could I do? You know, what kind of awesome fitness stuff are there out there that I could do? So I, so I went to Guinness Book of World Records and they have all these challenges they do on there now. Some of them are pretty, pretty crazy. Like how many backflips you can do in a minute and how many pushups you can do on, like on with your, well, on the back of your hands, and they have all these. If you, look at Michael Jack- if you look at Michael Jackson, he was just a fantastic business person. You just look at all the media publicity he got by putting himself in like uh, these crazy tanks and, you know, probably, you know, hanging the baby over the side of the thing. You know, it's all to, to, to drive the media publicity. Yeah, so, you know, if you think about you, and, and actually uh, another maverick. Um, Excuse me, another maverick friend of ours, Frank McGinney, um, he sells houses like that. He sells million dollar homes by t- turning it into a spectacle and, uh, you know, having, having an open house where he's flying a motorcycle over the home and stuff like that. And so if you look at those who have been really successful, self promotion is one of the, the best things you can do. It's also one of the cheapest things you can do because you don't have to pay yourself to show up. If you try to get a celebrity or try to get someone else to do it, you, there's a, there's a cost with that. And so, you know, think about what can you do in your local community to stand out it doesn't have to be that crazy you know but you just have to step up and and be a face of uh, be a leader in the community uh beyond just the the four walls of your gym yeah and touching on that though like people find that really difficult if if you have a fear around what people think of you that was one of the issues uh we talked about this mastermind and helped people overcome was that you know, all of this stuff is fantastic, but if you are worried what other people think and you have low confidence, then that's something that you need to build on. And then the other things start to become easy. Just a couple of things I want to wrap up on also, uh, which, uh, Richard, um, you know, said were really, really critical. And that was, you know, the power of delegation. You know, if you're not, um, really good at something, 
you know, Richard's on Necker Island, and yes, he does leave the island, but he's there most of the time, 75% of the time. But he runs three, 400 companies. And, um, and, and in order to do that, in order to be in a position he is, he's had to get at, get good at delegating and bringing in the right people. And also, he was very, very clear of the importance of mentors and having people, you know, hold you and, and the guidance from A to B. It's much easier to find people who've already done it, um, than, um, than try and work it out yourself. And actually, R Richard, um, is a fantastic listener and he still learns things and is, and is very, um, interested in, in listening to what both me and AJ had to say. Um, and so, you know, he's still learning and he's still on the journey. So I think that's also really important quote of the week uh is from richard branson i think we might have used this one before but i actually really love it it's a fantastic quote and it is if someone offers you an, an amazing opportunity and you're not sure you can do it just say yes and then learn how to do it later i just think that's a fantastic way to, to run your business so many people have fear around doing stuff but i'm i use this i'm just like yeah i can do it and then i, I work it out later on um so that's key i think the challenge for the week i think would be fantastic would be to think of a crazy richard branson style publicity stunt that you can pull for your business and uh, and see how crazy you can go yeah i tell you what if you if you do something send it over to us we'll make sure we share it with our listeners and uh, maybe uh, there'll be something a little extra special in there for you so make sure um if when you when you when you do it not if when remember go back to the early episodes don't be listening to these episodes if you're not going to take action um you know my and simon's voice may be attractive and uh, may soothe your uh soothe you for an hour but uh, our ultimate goal with this is to to help you grow your business so do this take action on this um put it in a place and let us know nothing makes us prouder than actually you know seeing the results that we get for people so um let us know what you do and uh, like i said we'd be sure to share that with our listeners yeah and if you do need some direction in your fitness business and you need a guide then you can reach out to me or aj aj roberts dot com uh, facebook.com slash aj roberts or myself simon lovell simon lovell dot co uk or facebook.com slash boy lovell b-o-y-l-o-v-e-l-l -L -L. and like we said earlier if you're not subscribed to the newsletter make sure you get uh over to thefitpreneurs.com subscribe to the newsletter so you don't miss out on an episode and any other awesome announcements me we, we may have also head over to itunes if you're a listener on there give us a five-star review leave, leave us some feedback and of course share this with your friends uh, on social media so we get a few more listeners like a virgin touch for the very first time pussy 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 guys thanks for the killer episode Listen, if you want to take your fitness business to the next level, terminate your competition, create ultimate freedom, buy new houses, cars, which could blow up, travel the world, or open your own gym where you can lift really heavy weights, then head to www.thefitpreneurs.com slash free call for details on how to apply for your free accelerator call. Until the next episode, hasta la vista, fit pros.